God lives and our soul lives as well. I thank the Lord for being in the midst of you. It is indeed is a blessing to be here again. In the church where we received blessings and direction in order to be in the will of God and where God wants us to be. It gives us great joy to be here. We see, we see new faces and it gives us even greater joy to see the work of God to increase. We see a church of God to be led, to be led to toward the heaven. Because what we we receive a lot of encouragement, and what you have here is not, not everybody has it. And what we see here, we are speechless, because the church expresses love. I think first and foremost, one of the reasons that we came to Greece because my niece Froso was getting married. Alexia and I, I was, I was surprised how the Lord, how they organized the, uh, this wedding. And we enjoyed this blessing of the marriage of my niece. And my heart is full of gratefulness because of this team, wedding team that uh, that did this work to organize this wedding. And this is a work that I don't even know who they are and it requires sacrifice. And I don't even know I don't even know if anybody says thank you. I don't know who they you are, but I have gratefulness in my heart. Because it was, it was a joy. No bless you that we didn't reserve it. It was a gift from God which God gave through you. I uh, also want to thank the Word of God. If you do not know, I, this is where I started to minister. Many people maybe do not know me. Because the brother Yorgo shot me in a closet to translate, and maybe none of you knows who I am. But this work, this team, works day and night, and night and day so that we on the other end of the earth to listen to the Word of God. And this is a great work, even though we do not understand, because you have a church every day. And you are in the midst of brethren, and I envy this, but for us, in our needs, in our joys and sorrows, it is our comfort. This is what gives us joy and strength. This is what, without decreasing God in my life, but this is what gives me direction uh, in our life, hard work. I want to th say thank you for my family and the Church of, of Australia and to the children, their labor and toil, so that we, we can enjoy the Word of God. I also want to need to say uh, hi and greetings for the Church of Sydney. All the brethren knows everything in Australia, everything about you guys. They know everything, everything that's happening. Who's getting married? Who is the Holy Spirit? Uh, we don't know anything. You do not, do not know anything about us, but we know everything about you. And this is what unite us in one body of Christ. This is a blessing that visits you, uh, yeah, but we receive us a portion of this blessing and food uh, so we can walk and seek to see whatever God is doing in Greece, when we seek also to do in Australia. Again, greetings from the Church of uh, Sydney. Let us honor the Word of God. Let us read something. Let us go to Genesis. Nineteen chapter. Genesis chapter 19. And the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. 
When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed himself with his face to the earth and said, My lords, please turn aside your servant's house, spend the night, and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly. So they turned aside to him and entered his house. He made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. And behold, but before they lay down, the men of the city, the men, son of both young and old, all the people, to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lord, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Lot went out to the men of the entrance, shut the door after him, and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known any man. Let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please. Okay, only do not to these men, for they come under the shelter of my room. But they said, Stand back. And they said, This fellow came to sojourn and has become the judge. Now he will deal worse with you than with them. Then the praise hard against the man Lot and drew near to break the door down. But the man reached out the hands and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house, both small and great, so that they wore themselves out, groping for the door. And the man said to Lot, Have you anyone else here? Sons in law? sons, daughters, or anyone you have in the city, bring them out of the place, for we are about to destroy this place, because the outcry against this people has become great before the Lord. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and said to his sons-in-law, where to marry his daughters, Up, get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-law to be jesting. As morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. So the man seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. And as they brought them out, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. And Lot said to them, Oh, no, my lords, behold, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have shown me great kindness by save, in saving my life. But I cannot escape the hills, lest disaster overtake me and I die. Behold, this city is near enough to flee to, and is, and is a little while. Let me escape there. Is it not a little one, and my life, my life will be saved? He said to him, Behold, I grant you this favor also that I will not overthrow the sin of which you have spoken. Escape there quickly, for I can do nothing till you arrive there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. The sun had risen on the earth, and the Lord came to Zor. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah, sulfur, and the fire from the Lord out of heaven. And you overthrew those cities of the valley, on the habits of the cities, and they were green on the ground. But Lot's wife behind him looked back. She became a pillar of salt. May the name of the Lord be, have glory. Amen. We see here a man whose name is Lot. Who didn't have any special promises from God. He, he didn't have a promise from God. But he followed Abraham. And Abraham had promises. A man who, with whom God had a work to do. And Lot followed Abraham. And thanks to Abraham, he received blessing from God. Thanks to Abraham, he saw God to be strong. And thanks to Abraham, he saw him strong. If he was where he was, he was. But Lot, he was blessed. And this blessing, thanks to Abraham, he had to make a decision. He had to choose where to go. Since there was a problem with the flocks of of the sheep of Abraham. 
the blessing brought him to a place of decision making. Something had to happen. And Lot chose according to the appearances of things. So Lot, as he lifted his eyes and looked at the valleys that were getting watered by the overflow of Jordan, it looked like a paradise of the paradise, it looked as the land of Egypt. So Lot did not seek direction from God, but based on what he saw, he made a choice. And this is a horrible lesson to us to do. Whatever shines to us and whatever looks good to us, whatever we like, does not mean it's the will of God. As now we see, it could be the reason that I might find my, myself that I will lose everything that I have, everything that God gave me. And we see a lot make a decision based on what he was seeing and to set his sin outside outside of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then we see him getting deeper in that area and then we see there was a war on the five kings and the Lord found himself a prisoner and he lost everything. So God gave Lot a warning lot to where you are it's not good to be there where you are maybe you lose everything where you are in Sodom you're not gonna make it but the word of God says but Lot he was afflicting his righteous soul he was righteous in Sodom and Gomorrah. But how were his wife, his daughters? Sometimes we think that we are strong. Sometimes we think that because God has blessed us, this gives us the authority to choose for ourselves. We think that we have strength. And we know that we think we know enough that we we can walk on the way anywhere we want. But the truth is, the more God blesses us, the more we should be humble and and kneel down and seek direction from God where we should go. Ha! Huh, should handle the blessing that God gives because because the blessing may bring us to a place that we cannot turn back. And how many times have we heard, have we heard, and I have heard, I know what I'm doing, I can. Sin does not affect me. I know how to handle this. And maybe, maybe Lord was saying the same thing. He, he did not observe the warning of God, discern the warning of God in his life. Abraham had to come in to save you. And the truth is, the choice I'm making today defines the blessing of what I have tomorrow. What if I'm choosing? The work I'm not doing? Who I'm going to get married to? Which church I should go will define my future. Not only my future. Also, the, the future of my wife, my children. It's very important to have to be in a place of seeking. I, I never knew. Lead me. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And the question tonight is where am I? Who has influence on me? Who educates who educates me? And whether God wants me to be there. A lot outside the gate. And a pity lot. And always thinking, why? 
and always say to God, why was he outside the gate and he was waiting there? And why wasn't he with his wife and his daughters? As if he was nostalgic of the presence of God. How was I? How was I with Abraham? How was I in the blessing of God? How was I? And now I see sin. My wife away from God. And I'm seeing my daughters marrying people from inside locals from Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't see any light. I'm trapped. I'm in bondage because I chose wrongly. Now it's easy to ask direction and God will give it to me rather than do something on my own and then try to get out of that situation because I'm in bondage then. Then I'm absorbing my environment, my children. My children are in trouble. My wife is in trouble. How am I going to get out of this? A lot. He finds himself at the gate. How can I get out of myself of this situation? Who, is, who can save me now? And glory to God. God who is love. God who is righteous. And thanks to Abraham, who was a friend, friend of God, who will find grace. He will see the hand of God, he will see God as a savior in his life. And I like when the angels came, the first, the first thing he did is that he bowed down. He understood who those people were. He understood the presence of God. What he was seeking is his heart, finally, is before him. And he f made them come and stay with him. Stay with me. Stay with me one night. To feel what I was feeling with Abraham. To feel the presence of God. To feel a comfort. One word. To feel God. To feel heaven. And I feel in my heart the seeking of Lord. How much did he want this? How much does he want this and desire this? And many times the Lord allows us to go through wilderness and seek God with all our hearts and all our soul to cry to the Lord because we want heaven. We, we have become children again. We've tasted again. We cannot live without God. We cannot we can live happily in this world. The Lord knew God, but, but he also had Sodom in his life. He couldn't enjoy God. He couldn't enjoy Sodom. He couldn't. He was afflicting his just soul. A life that was unpleasant because of one choice one choice <clears throat> how difficult it would have been to f fall on his knees to and say to the to say to God and say where do you want me to go I'm not going to make none a single step unless you tell me Lord where you want me to be he did what he enjoyed. May God, may the Lord preserve us from the things that we enjoy, from the things of the world, which the wicked one shines in our hearts and they bear fruit. But we think of this is the will of God. This is what God wants us to be. This is God what the Lord wants us to be. But how far are we? How far can he take us from the grace of the Lord, from the plan of God, from the plan that God has for us? We all know hey, how many times we heard from this pulpit, God has a perfect plan for us, perfect. But we have to submit to God and accept 
that God knows better than us, has a voice. I want to hear in our voice, in our love. The Lord wants us to lead us, and God wants to be our shepherd. I want to read one verse. It has made, set a mark on my heart. Then I wonder whether I am what a God. It's Titus chapter 3, verse 11. are written in the book of life and this grace has brought us here should be active and teach us to deny wickedness to deny whatever is in our life in our environment that is not according to the will of God something the law did not do and the poor man he did not have it but we do have the grace of the Lord to teach us how do I know that we are the grace of the Lord because it teaches us to reject deny everything that is wicked and defiled whatever is not the will of God in my life and if I think or and I should not think that I can do this on my own. Exaggerations. <clears throat> and to deny the world desires. This is our welfare in um, Australia, is the doctrines with fleshly doctrines. People who are in entangled with sin with in the flesh and say we're and confessing then and say they're a Christian people were in worship with the flesh and say that they're Christians and bring the spirit that they have coined it as freedom to come to bring it to us as to bring it to us uh, trying to bring it and say to us you put burdens on people's shoulders you are legalistic you interpret the scriptures even by the letter but this is what we do we do not want the world I do not want to deserve the things of the world I want to be different I want to differ from the world and I want this to be visible in my life. This is what, what's pleasing to God. This is what shows that there is grace in my life. Not to resemble the world. Not to follow the draft of the world. And instead to say to the Lord, Lord, teach me. How do you want me to behave? How do you want me to look? How do you want me to speak? Who do I want to shape me and edify me? Who is shaping me? Who do, whom do I allow to shape me? Me, my wife, my children, the Word of God, my colleagues, my, the world, the TV. The magazines, what the internet says, who is shaping me as a character? Who is teaching me how I should walk? What I should reject in my life? Who is shaping me now? Because many times we are entangled in our jobs and we say, say and then the grace of the Lord comes. I reject this. This is not from God. Reject this. It's not. It's going to kill you. It's going to kill you spiritually. It's going to deprive you from the grace of the Lord. 
or let us live soberly in reverence in the present time. Yes, different. They're sh they'll point their fingers at your children. You're different. I want to live in reverence for Christ that will be persecuted. And my child will be persecuted. And my wife will be. These days, there is an attitude. But the parents keep the word of God, but not the children. When they are modest, but not to the child, let us not pressure, pressure the child. This is what a lot did. I mean, I, I hold my integrity, but let my daughters re marry men from the, from the world. But that's okay, me and my wife getting tangled in Sodom and Gomorrah. And what's, a pastor used to say to me, Ah, oh, the Lord did not give me children for the fire or for hell. He gave, he gave me children to bring them to heaven with the grace of the Lord. There is no other gospel. There is no one gospel from me and my children. And with this, I want to give you a, a little testament. So many, uh, after so many years in Australia, I've heard many things. Uh, and uh, may. I may even write a book with other things that they tell me. One th they tell me, they tell me one thing in good faith. They tell me the Church of, of in Greece, the way the, the Church it is in Greece, there's no way it can be a planet Australia, which is a different culture. I could not digest this. Well, there is a different God in Greece, another God in Australia. There was one day, then Monday. We we'll never forget. I was very, was very grieved because of certain discussions and doctrines. And I entered my car with my my wife and my chi children. And I was driving, weeping. I was driving 10, 20, 50. 100 kilometers, 100, 120 kilometers. My my son asked me, asked me, and where are we going, Daddy? And I said, I, want, I do not know. So I went somewhere, I parked in Sydney, and I said, God, well, there is no man here in Sydney who wants to to fulfill your words in everything your word. In all this land of Australia, there is no single, there is no single soul or heart who wants to fulfill your word. In Australia, I said, I said this to God. I came back to my house, and then I went back home. Two days later, was a sister said, uh, "There's a brother here who wants to meet you." Uh, I wasn't. Uh, I was introduced to a brother, so I started speaking to him. Let us, which church you go? Uh, we met. It was the next day. The following day was Saturday. We we met. We went there as a family. There was a brother. We started speaking the word of God as we, we pulled out the scriptures. Uh, I started the most difficult points. I started telling him about the, dr the dress, about the covering. And the brother said, I said, let me just get it over with. And the brother uh, the brother said, well, this is the truth. And then we finished and we split up. So the brother said, let's meet again. And we met again. I, uh, I started, uh, as I was telling him all the controversial points, uh, and the brother said, well, this is the truth. I was talking about no to second marriage or the other controversial topics.
we went to him. Then after that, we went to his home. As we went back home, and when I and when I went to his house, it was when it was the the, the point I was a part. In my confusion, I had drove 100 kilometers, and I was praying to God, Lord, there's no single heart that can observe your holy word. That's what his family was. And after a week, I'm this soul. There was a soul that called me. Call me, said, I want to come to the church. We started going again 110 kilometers. She told me a very nice dream that she had. I am from Patra in Greece, and I saw a dream. God asked me to go to Australia. Paul, but to go to church, but it has exactly the same teaching us and doctrine as the church of Patra. And then the work of God started in Sydney. And Sister Agelli came when she came here. Her life changed. Her home, her home wanted to be open like yours, sir. Open with, with a brother. He went did something by She put in new floors. They painted the house. And this is going to become a church. With the grace of the Lord, we, we, We had the two brothers who came here maybe listening. God is very mighty. And when we seek His will, what we want to do, what His word says, when we honor His word, yes, we'll be persecuted, yes, we'll be lonely, yes, we'll be tested in this, but God is faithful and will come. We thank the Lord. Effie received the Holy Spirit. Two, uh, two boys after that received the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Holy Spirit, f um, fell to the house of, uh, of Sister Agiliki. They were baptized in the swimming pool of Agiliki. There was another sister who was baptized in the swimming pool of Agiliki. And after a few months, I called Brother Jorgen. Do you think it's time to make it to a room? And he answered back to me. Petition from God. Petition God, when He answers you, then we'll be ready. And I prayed. And the number, I was going to have to give a petition with the number of the number of souls that we're going to have to increase before we go to our room. I started making some calculations. And when Deno, Stacy, and, and Anula came, Lira Ann, we we made the number of 15, and so we were ready to go to the room. Let us not compromise with the world. It has not to give us, only to deceive us and to scorn, scoff at us. His wife was, was a time to cook when his wife was We don't see here the wife of Lord cooking for the angels. Where was the wife, Lord? Lord cooked here for the angels. And the wife, Lord, was deep in, in Sodom. She, uh, his, his daughters were terribly entangled with the people of Sodom. What impressed me is that when I, uh, he asked, his future brother, sons-in-law, 
they thought the Lord was jesting. I didn't believe it. And that's the worst testimony we can have for people to think that we're jesting, not to be somber, to be serious, and have a solemn testimony. If you're here, the church, because if somebody asks you a very good question, if you're a child of God, why are you lying? If you're a child of God, why are you not where the Prince of God is? It's very easy to to be to make to criticize Lot because Lot did not have an intercessor, but we do. God has given us everything, everything. Some of you, a little bit more here, because you have this paradise. Where should I go? I have sorrow. I should go to the church. I don't feel good to the, to the praying time. Where should I go? I should go to the youth group. I have a problem. I should go to the elder. I have this. I should go to the shepherd. Blessing of God. The truth is, when we are in Christ, we miss nothing. God deprives nothing. If I feel deficient, I should judge where I am. Is one of my legs in the world, another leg in the church? Uh, am I comp am I make it my the, make it very difficult for the Lord to bless me? Should I get off Sodom and Gomorrah where I am? Maybe. Or do I find myself where I should be? But I allow other things, other things to shape me, educate me. I want to say something that I perceive to be very important. Uh, by vocation, I'm a teacher, and I'm making certain, I'm studying certain, I'm conducting certain studies and assessments. And this study is very troubling, as with regards to psychology. They have young kids that are getting psychotropic pills, and we're discussing with certain doctors to see what's at fault here. Let us be very careful what we allow our children to see and to play with. The devil has succeeded. Succeeded to open a door, even Christians, to penetrate the world, the soul world, inner world of the children. It requires great attention and praying. What do we allow the children to watch? So what we're doing. This separate the children are playing video games, and those that don't play video games. Children, the children that play video games are irritable, and even though they're young, they get agitated, irritable. They have rage. What do we allow in our home? Let us not allow to the enemy. Let us not trust for the box that says suitable for children. It's, it's not suitable for certain. Always through the lens of the through the lens of the word of God. What is what is modest? Whatever has works of flesh. Whatever is not according to the will of God, let us not allow our children free to watch, because then, then they become full victim under the influence of the devil. Let us guard our homes. The Lord lost everything. 
Lord was afflicting his own soul, but he wasn't paying attention to his family. Uh, as men, as fathers, we are obliged to safeguard our family, our holiness, certificate, to have the voice of God in our life. And above all, our family, God has given us a great gift. Uh, we are we are have the mandate to live a holy life a sanctified life because this is the latter times we hear so many things that we see even more things may the Lord keep us till the end so we watch as men what we look at Lately, I was reading the world, the wicked, has, met, has managed man to become an eternal teenager. And we, see, and we see man 30 or 40, 30, 40 years old to, play, to come back from work and we sit before the computers and play video games. And people, instead of leading their families, instead of watching, instead of watching the family and leading the family to God and spend time with the families, and this would not happen in the past. Uh, my grandfather would not believe this. The Lord mocks the family. He mocks the wife and the children. Let us watch the Word of God. Let us not allow the influences of the world, because we're not of the world. We are from God. The world gives us nothing. The the only thing that the world gives us is to pray for people to get saved, to bring people to Christ, and let us pray for them. The Lord has allowed us to be here to evangelize people and to point to them that God exists, that Christ is living. And people... <coughs> They want to see God in our lives. They want to see God in our children, our families. They want to see the difference in our lives. And this is our, <clears throat> our uh, point that we should pay attention to. The future sons-in-law of Lot were mocking Lot. So we're doing fine. What are you talking about, angels destroying this city? We're doing fine. I like the angels pulling and forcing Lord to exit the city. The love of God through, sort of, through trials, with persecutions, to bring us to a place in order to save us always. And I like what it says, Lord, To the angels, let me not go. Uh, am I, uh, and I like when what Lot says, please let me go to the nearby city, little city. And I'm not going to understand this. Here the world is destroying everything. And here God lowers himself the level of Lot. And God is, uh, is, af uh, is affected by the petition of Lot. And Lot is expressing his weakness. It is good to express a weakness to, to the Lord, to express to God that we're not strong. Many times we're a mess. Well, we should confess this to God, so God to give us a strength, so that God so God will give us a strength to give us a chance. So he will be 
proven mighty in our lives along with our brethren and let us not lord of brethren heavy burdens to our brethren and say you did evil there you didn't do good didn't good there gently gently prod our, our brethren and God will bring us where we want to be a church that lifts the name of Christ that wants to see the face of God fire fell from heaven Mrs. Lot turned and looked back our fears our insecurities to turn back the insecurity of Christians if I have a lot of if I have a lot of world in my heart so that I don't, cannot look forward I have so many things in my heart so they cannot follow the directive of God look forward and we'll be saved just do, just do this and we'll be saved she couldn't do it so let me close with the words of Christ remember the wife of Lot and tonight let us remember the wife of Lot let us seek God to, to keep us in the place we want to be and to bring us in eternal glory Amen